first grab them, they, they like to splash and just kind of push it over. I do see there actually might be one microorganism. Hey guys, welcome back to Luke's Goldies. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking the slime coat sample from Bubba, my goldfish, and testing it to see if there are any parasites or any problems with them. Uh, this is not something you wanna do uh, very often because you are actually stripping the slime coat away from the fish. Uh, so it does actually leave that spot susceptible to infections. However, it is good to do it maybe one to two times a year just to ensure that there's no parasites that somehow got into your system and infected your fish. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get you want to get your goldfish. This is Bubba right here. So I'm going to pull him up out of the water, and he might he might kind of splash when when you do this. And then you want to get a slide here. Um, so you want to like sometimes when you first grab them, they they like to splash. Uh, so you want to you want to give them a moment. Just to, just to relax, just to relax. And then with their back out of the water, you wanna take the top of the slide and just kinda of push it over to the point where you get some of that, some of that gel on there. Uh, it's kinda of hard for the camera to focus, but you can see we have, we have basically a little sample of some, of some mucus from the top of the goldfish. All right, then you wanna get a slide cover. This isn't 100% necessary, but I do like it just to kinda of move all the slime onto the glass itself. And then I can kinda of push the slime down uh, so we get a good, hold on, let me, so we kind of get it spread out over the glass. And then I'm basically, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it underneath the microscope and then look in for any protocytes or uh, parasites or protozoa that are possibly uh, on that slime coat. So now that you got your slide cover, you do want to put this on your microscope. And the first thing I like to do is I like to put it at uh, about like, I think this is 50 times mag. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I think it's around 50 times magnification. And you want to start with the biggest, obviously, because there are some parasites that uh, there are some parasites that will only really be noticeable at a large magnification. If you zoom in too close, you might actually be looking at just a part of that parasite. Because some of these parasites actually tend to be pretty large, uh, especially like those those skin and, and body flukes. They they do tend to be pretty large at 50 magnification. You'll see them. You'll see them just fine. All right. So then you want to get your slime in focus. So we got it in focus. And now we're gonna move around and just see, do we see any large moving parasites? And from what I see, I don't see anything, anything that looks like a commonly known parasite that's, that's moving around. So we'll move around, all I see just are a bunch of cells. And those, those, little, those little dots you see, I, I believe those are basically just little, little mucus cells uh, from, from the slime coat. Uh, but from what it looks like right now, it does look pretty clean. So let's increase the magnification and then we'll go down again and see if we see if we see anything else. All right, now we've increased the magnification to around uh, around 150x. Again, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I am not I'm not a vet. I'm not a not a biologist. But this is basically just from what I'm looking at the microscope. Uh, but again, I'm looking at the slime coat. I don't see anything that really looks concerning. I don't see. Um, I do see some random things here and there, but I don't see anything moving, and uh, everything looks pretty pretty uniform. So uh, to, to my knowledge, this slime coat actually looks pretty healthy. I don't, I don't, see, I don't really see any parasites at all. Uh, typically, if you have a parasite problem, uh, you'll see a lot of them. You might find one or two parasites here and there, but it's actually extremely common in goldfish. I feel like almost more common than not that you were gonna find, uh, you were gonna find some parasites on there versus no parasites. Um, but you might even find little things like that you see right here in the middle. It looks like a, like a possible worm, but those are just random strands in there. Uh, it's not ne necessarily a worm. Uh, if, you, if you see something moving around, that might be a worm. Uh, but even then, there are some worms in, in your system that might not actually be infectious. But the, the fact that you don't see anything moving around is, is a good sign. It, it does look like a really, a really clean and uniform slime coat. So it does, it does look pretty good. We'll increase the magnification one more time just to see if we can see anything cool. All right, so we've increased the magnification even more. I believe this is around like 500 times magnification. Again, I might be wrong. Do not trust what I'm saying here. Um, but as we can see, just looks like a big pile of mush. Uh, basically, you can almost see the individual cells. Each of those little, those little blocks you see are, are, are individual cells, I believe. Um, but from what I see here, I don't see any, any like major parasites. And I do see there actually might be one microorganism on my lens itself, because you can see something moving around, but as I move my lens, it continues to move with it. So it looks like I have some random little, little microorganism on my lens itself, uh, but I'm looking at the slime coat, and he basically looks like he's, like he's sterile, like there's nothing on there at all. All right, so overall, uh, the slime coat sample from Bubba's looking pretty good. And most of the time, if you take a slime coat from one fish, 
in the tank that both fish have been living in for quite a while. Uh, it's pretty safe to assume that the other uh, slime coat would look pretty similar. Um, if there's a large infestation on one of the fish in a 50 gallon tank like this, uh, chances are you probably see at least some of that on the other fish as well. Um, that doesn't really go for bacterial infections or fungal infections that are more that are things that tend to attack the fish more when they're at, uh, at you know weakened immunity. For things like parasites that would really attack them at, at any point in either in sickness or in health, uh, if you find it if you don't find it on one, it's unlikely you're going to find much of anything on the other as well. Uh, you could do it on both, but I like to do I like to do mucus samples as uh, as least often as possible because I don't like. I don't like ripping off that slime coat because just in sampling that you are you are making them a little more susceptible temporarily to an infection on their back. Uh, but I think I think he'll be just fine, and I think I'm I'm very satisfied with the results for this for the sample. So I just want to finish up this video by saying that I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm not an aquaculture expert. I don't have any degrees in this field. I'm not a vet, so don't take any of my advice as expert advice. If you're looking for someone to give you rock solid expert uh, expertise in this matter, I would definitely reach out to a veterinarian. Uh, this is just me sharing my experiences as someone that's very deep into the goldfish hobby. And I also want to talk about what you should do, or at least what I do, if I do find something crawling around in the slime coat of my goldfish. Uh, I simply just look up online common diseases, common parasites uh, for in goldfish or in fish in general and try to match up the images of what I see on the microscope to what I see online and then from there try to identify the exact disease the exact uh, species of that of that of that infection and then look up common treatments for that and I'll look for the I'll look for multiple sources to corroborate a single a single treatment that they say is pretty solid and also try to look up multiple sources that co corroborate a single dosage for that uh, and then from there I'll probably treat my fish with that um, so there's not one way to do this. There's a lot of different diseases. There's a lot of different treatment methods, and there's all kinds of information out there. Uh, but the most important thing I can tell you guys is uh, to like and subscribe. No, I'm joking. The most important thing I can tell you uh, is to do your own research. Do not take this video uh, as a, like do not take any of my videos as like the one and true way to do how to do anything. Do your own research for everything, um, and then make up make your own decisions. Uh, but. Going back, actually liking and subscribing definitely is another one of those super important things you want to do. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Luke Goldies out.